will now have Stephen Gideon from Ryerson, um, who will give us a presentation. And uh, as an accelerator, we are very intrigued to hear of what is happening. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, who loves what they do for a living? Uh, this is great. You know, none of us have to be here today. Like, for most people, I mean, this is certainly what I tell my students, is, you know, the trouble with angels is they don't have to deploy their capital. If they don't like you, they can go sailing. They can go play golf. They don't have to give you their money. VCs, you guys got to deploy your capital. Sorry, you got to put up with lousy entrepreneurs even if you don't like them. But for the rest of us, we do what we love to do. I do what I love to do as well, too, and I don't have to be here either if I don't want to be. So let's all keep that in mind, that we're here for a shared purpose because we like being here. We're doing what we're passionate about. So um, I thought about titling this, Universities Are Weird Places. <laughs> um, so I, but I figured I'd start at least with a picture of me in a, in a gown. And uh, I promised Brian I would do that, but apparently Brian's not here. So, <clears throat> so I embarrassed myself for no good reason. Um, <laughs> The, uh, a little bit about myself, so I'm on my third career actually. My first career was as a scientist and engineer. I've got a PhD from MIT. Uh, and then I discovered that nobody cares about technology. <gasps> nobody, you care, no you don't. You care about what technology does for you when technology is bundled into a product or a service. Nobody cares about technology. So of course I went back to school, got my MBA, started a new career as, a, as an entrepreneur, a venture capitalist, so I started over a dozen different businesses. Um, uh, there's a couple of venture capital firms. I guess I could stand behind this thing. I, you know, I tell my students, if you're afraid of speaking, you can hide behind the podium. But you can't hide behind this podium. What's the point? So, in, and this isn't even very loud, so I, I'll just wander around a little bit. Um, so, uh, my second career was as a serial entrepreneur and venture capitalist. And then I became a professor and really discovered what I, what I absolutely love to do. Um, so, uh, one of the things that I've been doing a as a professor is uh, I was chairman of the educational committee here at uh, NACO for a few years. We produced the Age of the Angel, which is a best practices guideline on angel investing. Uh, I wrote the valuation chapter because nobody else wanted to write the valuation chapter. <laughs> like, I think I, I think I missed a meeting. Like, Steve, we volunteered you to write the valuation chapter because nobody else knows how to do that. We don't want to admit that we just make it up. Um, <laughs> VCs are going, well, no, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that. Then they'll negotiate with us. Oh, right, I wrote the, I wrote the negotiation chapter as well, too. Is there is no fair valuation. It's just a negotiated thing. If you've got cash flow, valuation goes up. <laughs> You're starving for cash, valuation goes down. <laughs> Push the button. Ah, here we go. So uh, a little bit of background about Ryerson University. Um, apparently, it's turned into one of the most sought after schools in, in Canada. It's got the largest percent listed as first choice universities in Canada. So the largest number of students list Ryerson as their first choice. And um, we've got the largest applicant to acceptance ratio in Canada. We're, we're just over 10 to one now. Uh, it's the largest continuing education program in Canada, largest business school in Canada, largest entrepreneurship program in Canada. We've got 14 full-time entrepreneurship professors at Ryerson University. We've got three MBAs and a bunch of PhDs and some cool stuff like that. That being said, universities are weird places. Um, when I first went there, it took me a while to really figure out what the heck is going on. So if any of you have ever tried to work with the university, it is hard, I accept that. They're very organized for teaching classes. They're very good at getting bums in seats and having people talk at them and give grades but they're very lean organizations. So if somebody comes to them and says, I got a great idea. Let's, um, let's, let's run a program for returning veterans uh, to help them get a better education, to prepare them to get into university. And everybody says, that's a great idea. Who's gonna do it? Nobody. Like there's nobody sitting around going, oh, I wanna take on something. So people come to universities all the time with great ideas and the universities go, that's a great idea. We're gonna do absolutely nothing about it. Um, and they've got great facilities. You know, we've got a 500-seat auditorium, and we've got breakout rooms, and we've got a, a demonstration kitchen with a 50-foot granite counter, and all these amazing facilities, and they're sitting there right now with nobody using them. Not, we don't charge anybody for them. So, Matt Tay, how much are you paying to be here today? I'm wondering the same question. 
Uh, just kidding. Um, we're busy during work, work days usually. Weekends, could have had it here. But, but, so, but there's no real apparent infrastructure for doing anything other than teaching classes. And there's no apparent funding for anything else. There's no apparent funding for anything else. And here's something I, I love, but was really confusing when I first got there. Nobody's in charge. It's a collegial environment. The president isn't really in charge of anything. He's got like two people that work for the president. Um, I don't really work for the dean. I don't really work for the president. I kind of sort of work for myself. Well, how do you do that when you got all these prima donna professors all running in different directions like a herd of cats? It's, it's, it's almost impossible. And even worse, it's hard for outsiders to get involved. So um, the beauty of this, though, is this is an entrepreneurial opportunity for somebody like me. I'm like, aha, nobody's in charge. Great facilities. Let's do something cool. So the question was, how? How do you create an organization within an organization? And the answer is, of course, the students. So we started the only student-run entrepreneurship center in Canada, and this is really a secret to everything going on in entrepreneurship at Ryerson, is it's the students. We've got over 120 active volunteer members. So we've got Ashley standing right there, our VP of, uh, there you go, got the headphones on, she's a radio and television student, looks like a picture of her in here somewhere on the bottom row. Uh, we've got Tanga, head of technology, he's working on his uh, business technology management degree. Well, we've got Gagan, the Vice President of the Ryerson Angel Network. He's an entrepreneurship student. Uh, some of our students are working at NAOO. We've got Yasmin is one of our former students. Brandon is one of our former students. And the students have amazing energy and talent. If, if you can put up with the fact that they're students. <laughs> well, you know, they're not employees. They do what they want. They do what they're passionate about. They're Students, they have to study for midterms. <laughs> you know, they've got lives outside of whatever the project is that the Ryerson Entrepreneur Institute is doing. But as long as you can do that, we have this amazing organization. We've got a fully equipped marketing team with 25 people. Our marketing department at REI is bigger than Ryerson University. And we've got computers and technology, and they all go, like, they're getting degrees in graphic communications management. They're really good at making posters. They're really good at making websites and all that kind of stuff. We've got an events team that run over 80 events a year. That's almost two a week on average of events that our team is running. We've got like 40 people in the events team, and they want to grow up and become event planning managers and consultants and things like that. So we run events from demo camp with 500 people to uh, in, in the big 500 seat auditorium all the way down to little idea consultations with a couple of uh, angels coming in and giving advice to, to uh, would-be entrepreneurs. Uh, we got a videography team that uh, Ashley heads up. We've got over 75 online videos that we've created over the time. Uh, we manage over a dozen different brands and websites and a YouTube channel and stuff like that. We've got a cross-campus network. And we've got a business development team. We have uh, uh, have partnerships with over 70 different partners throughout, throughout Toronto. So uh, some of the things that this team has done is uh, they, they, they compete and they get prizes and things like that. Uh, our team's won over 20 regional and national championships and competitions over the last couple of years. Uh, they've, you know, they've got their own bank account and things like that. It's really amazing. And the good thing is, because they're students, who's going to tell them they can't do it? <laughs> so and if they do something wrong, what are you going to say to a group of students? Hey, you shouldn't have done that. You're not going to get tenure. <laughs> We're the clients. Uh, so the Ryerson Entrepreneur Institute, basically we help uh, students, alumni, the broader community start up new businesses and provide them with education and resources and things like that. So we help start and expand businesses through education, resources, and funding, some of the education stuff we do. Uh, we've done um, 500 pe person de uh, demo camps and we do this cool thing called Startup Weekend where we get about 30, 40 entrepreneurs over the, over the course of a weekend, they start up five or six new businesses over the course of a weekend. It's amazing what you can get with pizza and beer. <laughs> it's amazing. Actually, my budget, if they ever audit my budget, it's like alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. <laughs> International travel, alcohol. Because that, that, that's, what, that's, that's what gets the students. It's the most cost-effective beer money the president has ever given me. Um, but we've run over 20 boot camps and workshops last year, over 30 idea consultations where people stand up in front of people such as yourself and say, I've got this great idea. and then. People like you say, 
you should go work at McDonald's. <laughs> or this is a great idea, you should go to, to do something else. Um, we run conferences, things like that. For resources, we got a wide array of different resources uh, from mentorship programs and CEO societies and things like that. But one of the coolest things is, is, the, is the, the digital media zone. So this is a 16,000 square foot incubator at the heart of Toronto in the corner of Young and Dundas. Um, crazy expensive real estate, but it, boy, it looks amazing. It's great. So it, it's a real nice showcase for the university. We've got some really cool projects going on in there. Um, and our team basically launched the whole thing. It started with just a blank empty room and our students, you know, lugged up the beanbag chairs and created the logo and the brand and the marketing materials. And then you gotta fill, you gotta put bums in seats, right? So you had to like poster campus and say, hey, we got this cool new thing called the Digital Media Zone, you can come and you know, run the idea consultations, filter out the bad ideas. And, and now that they're inside the zone, our students are helping provide them with access to legal advice and, and things like that. The students don't give legal advice. I mean, we partner with Gowlings to provide legal advice or, or Martin Fask, uh, Fask and Martineau or people like that. Um, so, uh, you know, we also provide other various things such as, um, you know, helping, you know, select the participants, overall strategy, stuff like that. We got a cool new one going on called the Center for Urban Energy. This is a $7 million program with unique facilities related to um, green energy or clean energy and, and things like that. So uh, Trellis Capital, if you're interested, I'm happy to have a conversation about you know, accessing your, your clean technology fund or when we've got something worth showing you, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you about it. Um, so that's another incubator we're starting up. In terms of funding, we've got a wide variety of funding opportunities. We've got the $25,000 Slate Communication Business Plan Competition. We run a $35,000 social entrepreneurship uh, project called Project Wildfire for at-risk youth. Uh, we help provide access to um, CYBF and the VDC grants and loans and things like that. We've got our own little seed microfinancing fund. We give a little $1,000 microfinancing things um, uh, to students. Um, and of course, we've got the Ryerson Angel Network. So we've got 42 angels. We've invested, uh, well, it, it's over a million dollars now over the last couple of years. Um, not all of our deal flow comes from Ryerson. I'd say about a third of our deal flow comes from Ryerson. About two thirds comes from outside of Ryerson. And our portfolio targets are primarily youth-based entrepreneurs. Youth is defined as under 35, for the record. We're not, we're not anal about that if they're 37 or something like that. But um, so we run an angel network. Um, and over the last couple of you know, years, we've helped over 300 student entrepreneurs. We've helped a bunch of at-risk youth. We've helped, uh, here we go. What's that? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, we've helped, we've helped uh, children entrepreneurs. Like one of our children entrepreneurs has raised over $200,000 for cancer. Not bad for a 13-year-old kid. I think that was her video that, that I skipped through there. Amazing literate. She's going places, this kid. Uh, we've helped various innovators as well, high school students, First Nations people. Uh, most recently, um, they flew to Dago, Kenya and started up uh, a credit union which is kind of cool, you know? Like, how do you open up a bank in a different country? And uh, so we got a microfinancing program based on the Grameen Bank in Dago, Kenya. And so, oops, so I skipped through that. So we've done a lot of things over the last year. So over the last year, we ran 82 projects, helped start up 86 new businesses, created 200 new jobs, invested over half a million bucks. So a lot of cool things going on at Ryerson. Um, and of course, now that, you know, all these good things are happening, you know, even the provost is now talking about it. So um, I guess really, you know, the, the, the bottom line is that universities are freakishly weird places. But within Ryerson, at least, we've created a receptor organization called the Ryerson Entrepreneur Institute and Students in Free Enterprise, that if you've got any cool ideas or if you want to run an event or if you want to access some facilities or if you want some energetic young people to get involved in maybe helping one of your companies or helping run a conference or something like that or, or videotape an event like they're doing here, we've got a huge group of energetic young professionals that are interested in doing stuff like that. Uh, if you're interested in getting involved at all, and I'm not sure you know, if you want to hear a pitch, but we're always looking for good, uh, interested people that are passionate about what they're doing, like everybody in this room. Uh, we, so uh, we have uh, relationships with people that do idea consultations, a no strings attached you know, way to 
give people advice. Um, uh, we, we, we do ask people to sign a code of conduct uh, just because we're not dragons, you know. Uh, be nice to the students. <laughs> so, but outside of that, you can give, give them your opinion. We're looking for business plan judges, mentors, uh, speakers, and of course, we're always looking for angels. So um, I think I cut my thing down from what it was supposed to be to a much shorter amount of time. Are we taking questions? We're not doing questions. Any questions or any comments? Okay, I think that we are back on track. Yes.